Okay, so hello. So today this is the chapter 13, right? So it is an experiment and for the experiment is a kind of a very important research design. Like uh, how we can conduct experiments and for the experiment, especially for the in case of the quantum experiment, is a kind of kind of a very useful in case of my, my case because I I even write a write a journal publication article by using the quantum experiment design. So it is a great quite interesting topic for today. So yeah, yeah, quite yeah. interesting. Yeah, so here is the kind of today we want to try to do the, these kind of experiments and what the experiment is about. So, like in here, it is just about the statistic proof commonly applied to the program evaluation. Actually, the experiment and quasi experiment is very useful to me have a kind of program or maybe policy. To analyze, like, uh, if we want to analyze or examine about the impact of the program or policies on some certain outcome, we actually set up the experiment and call that experiment. So, so a few of the research design for this one is uh, like a uh, randomized control experiment. So, whenever we have or try to experiment, we must try to pick up the random, randomized groups. Like two different groups. So one is the treatment, which is the treatment group, and the other one is the blood receiving the uh, treatment, which is the control group. So all both group actually samples or data sets should be chosen randomly for both group. So that's the kind of things. And then by doing that, we can actually generalize you know, about the, what the treatment effect is about. In the randomized population, and then on such experiment, there is actually a little bit different from observation data because of actually experimental data is a kind of measuring how um, randomized control kind of things, but observed is a kind of cross sections kind of data set and then randomly assigned because we actually purposely sampling. And then try to observe the, those kind of data and then take it for those data set. But in the experimental, uh, yeah, because yeah, there is uh, some background noise in outside. So sorry about that. <clears throat> but you can hear my voice, right? Yeah, so it, it makes uh, the, the, the talk not very sort of uh, clear. I don't know. If uh, Oh, okay, so now you can hear that. Yeah. Yeah. No. No background noise. Yeah. Okay. So, so like, uh, when we try to do the do the observation data is a kind of uh, kind of non randomly applied. Okay. But the experiment is a kind of kind of randomized chosen uh, sample are the randomized chosen those kind of things. But the thing is, for economics or maybe social scientists, randomized control experiment is very difficult and even feasible because it's already set up. When we say about the experiment kind of things, it is what is called the kind of lab conditions, you know. Because uh, in the intellectual sciences, or maybe some some very highly controlled uh, lab uh, lab environment, we can actually research can control every every possible factors inside the lab, right? That's the how we can do the experiment, right? But the thing is, in the real world. We cannot control the all of the those kind of external factors because it is already there. The only thing is we cannot measure. But in the real world, our goal is to be the how by while minimizing the those external external factor, and then how how to measure the effect. 
of the treatment or outcome. That's the clinical question. So that is actually what is called, this one is actually called what is called the quarter experimental design. Experimental, experimental design is clinical random, and randomized data sample, and then highly control, controlled environment by the, by the researchers. But in the quarter experimental, we just try to minimizing this external factor and then I try to measure the this effect. So kind of like an average body put average effect through the uh, uh, through the iteration or maybe uh, I would say iteration of the process etc. Okay. That's the kind of is the main differences between uh, between the experimental and quasi experimental. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know whether the problem is my side. Like uh, when you when you like talk uh, continuously for a while, the noise uh, tends to uh -huh. over, overcome what you are saying. So it then there gets to be a lot of noise. But once once you pause, it it goes away. Yeah, something like this. So I don't know whether it's from my end or from your end. Ah, uh, yeah, it's I, actually outside the car. So. Like uh, that, you you can even hear that one because it's quite far from my home. But can you hear the outside noise outside of my house? At least. So, so not really. I I, th I was thinking it it has to do with the the, the audio or something like this. Oh okay. Because where I where I'm here also there is some noise because there is some fun fun. I don't know whether you hear that. Oh, actually, I can hear your voice very clearly. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, because your voice is uh, very, very clear. I think I can hear you very clearly. But I'm not sure why you think you have a problem. Okay, let me. Okay, let me do this again because uh, maybe we can. Uh, I will, I will change my, <clears throat> I will say, I will change my, um, my head, uh, headset and then I will maybe try to use it that one instead. Is that the last one? Good? Okay, hold on. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, somehow, Lou. Yeah, so can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no noise. That's, that's much better. Huh? It, it, is, it, is it much better now? Yeah, it's better. It's just, just that it's only low, but it's, there is no noise. It's, it's better now. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's a bit low I, because my volume is at the max. Uh, there is no noise. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so now you can hear me, hear me very good, right? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, so let's continue then. Okay. So, so like I said, so for economists, especially for the social sciences, it is very difficult or even infeasible to implement it for the experimental thing because uh, we cannot control the kind of like a lab. So, so that, that kind of external circumstances can be called uh, quasi-experimental or natural experimental. So we just kind of, uh, as if randomness, a lot to the causal effect to the, to the economies and then using to, to the look like uh, ideal randomized control, uh, control experiments. So that's the how this one is about. Actually, this one is actually all of the summary throughout the, this chapter, you know? So yeah, yeah, it's quite, I, I found the introduction quite interesting. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, it gives you a good overview. Yeah, cause in here, like uh, what actually says is, it is actually consisting of the pre-test, okay? Post-test. Okay, and then there is the O1 and O2, okay, in the pretest, which is called the observation group one, observation group two, okay. And then uh, both actually have a similar characteristics. Okay, and then during the time period, like a study period, we actually put some, apply the treatment into the only one group, okay? So in this case, O1 has the treatment in here, like an X, and then O2 does not have anything. O2 is just a standstill. So that means this one, O2 gonna be the control group. O1 gonna be the treatment group. Cause it has a treatment applied, right? And then after the post test, we have still have O1 and O2. And then we can testing the outcome. Compare those two. That's the how experimental happen, okay? When something apply to the one specific group and then others does not, and then what's the difference between the two? So, so basically this kind of a research design should have a, what is called the time series data set. Right? Because so without any kind of a time, uh, time-based uh, observation, we cannot compare compare the uh, group in terms of the effectiveness of the some program or policy, etc. So that means cross-sectional cross sectional yeah. data cannot be. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, I was thinking uh, uh, it, it might be more like a sort of a panel data. Yeah, panel data is uh, is also the same, like a panel yeah. data or time yeah. series data. Yeah. yeah, longitudinal data, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are the kind of like the same. So, so these they, by using the these data, we can actually set up these kind of experimental kind of conditions or research design, right? So that means our data sets data sets should have a time series or timely observation is the observation data sample, okay? And then we have we have a very clear outcome should be required. And then what about the treatment? Also clearly defined, okay? And then finally, how we can do is uh, how we can find the treatment and control control group, how we can define those two groups. So 
when we try to design the, this kind of a quasi-experimental or maybe some kind of experimental design, we have a, this, this four is the one of the, this four is the very key issue. And then uh, we have to clearly define the these four before we conducting the uh, conducting the these kind of experimental or quasi experimental design. Okay. Any questions uh, or anything? No, it's uh, it's good. Okay, so let's move on. And then, and then in here we have to use the these kind of a. Uh, uh, this kind of actually uh, uh, R code, and then and then let's let's move on to the next section. So it's the potential outcome and causal effect and idealized experimental. So we have to briefly detail the what is the average causal effect is is about and then how we can be estimated by the difference estimation. So. That means what is called the difference in difference test. And then the average cause effect is the average treatment effect, which is the ATE, like the average treatment effect. Okay. So, so now, what is the potential outcome and average cause effect? is in here actually it is about the there is actually two conditions should be achieved uh, should be met to do the this kind of ideal randomized control experimental like i said the subjects will be selected uh, at random from the population so randomized selection and then a randomized assigned to the treatment and control group so here is the population like this and then uh, we can randomize randomly chosen all of the, these things. And then when we have a treatment group and when we have a control group, we have to randomly assign the treatment group or control group. That's how these two things is about. These are the very important concepts because uh, that actually allows us to generalize what is called the average causal effect. Like what's the expectation value for the Y when X is one, which is the treatment group, or at minus expectation value for the uh, Y when the X is the control group, okay? So this one is actually expected value for the treatment group. And this one is expectation value for the control group. Okay, so by calculating the difference between the, these two groups, expected value of the outcome, we can actually measure the what is called the average causal effect. Okay, so, and then in here, actually, it is about the binary treatment indicator. So, like a dummy variable, which is the when is one and then the other one, the other one is a zero. So yes or no kind of question. Okay. Uh -huh. So let's move down. And then that's the basic concepts of the this. And also another thing we also need to be noticed is about the error term right here. So when we when we have uh, this kind of a uh, uh, error term, should be the conditional mean independence kind of a loop. So every this kind of expected value should be the zero. And then uh, they both are the kind of a very exclusive to the one another. And also in here on the OLS estimation model, we also set up the, uh, a lot of the W I value, which is the in different estimator for the additional regression. So which means this one is a more like a control variable, okay? So whenever in the in the experimental kind of a condition, and then a, there is a kind of a lab condition, we actually have a x value and y to the outcome as a relationship. But other than the this kind of a 
uh, variable or data set, there is a lot of external factors we have to control. Those are the actually what is called the WI, which is additional regression. Okay, so this should be the control by including the those kind of a regression, those kind of a variable inside the, our regression model. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about the threat of the validity of the experiment then. Because uh, like I said, when we try to do the kind of a experimental design, we actually selecting the treatment group and control group. And then uh, whenever we have the treatment applied to the observation treatment group, and then we can come, we can have a O1 and O2 after the treatment, and then we can we can compare the those two expected value of the Y, right? And then we can get the some of the treatment effect of the X, right? But what but main problem about the, this kind of a design is. So when we try to looking at the previous section, we actually assume that our sample, our samples are selected randomly, right? From population. Is that correct? Right? But yeah. But the thing is, how we can make sure about the these random is random these samples are the selected randomly how we can ensure this kind of part that's of how where the threat month to internal validity come from okay and also external validity Because uh, when we talking about the validity, we uh, actually validity mainly consisting of the two parts. One is the internal validity, like within the population, valid with the, within the sample. Sample should be the come from the with, uh, same population, and then the external validity is the our our research design and then our research is the, can be generalizable to the other cases. Okay, other sample size. So whenever we select the, the other random sample from the population, same treatment effect gonna be estimated by based on the this design. So those, those kind of things is external validity. And, you know, these are the highly highly issue when we try to design like uh, this kind of a setting. Okay, so when we move down here, uh, here. Threat month is the random, uh, randomly, uh, internal validity is the failure to the randomize. So that means we we are not can be can be uh drawn the sample are drawn from the pop random population and those are not the randomly assigned to the treatment group. Like uh, we actually purposely select the sample. That's the kind of problem. And then the second one is the failure to follow the treatment protocol. That means Maybe we can actually O1 and O2, and then uh, we only apply to the treatment to the O1. But sometimes, due to the due to the mistake of the researchers or maybe some some problem with the research in design, this kind of a treatment might affect it to the the other control group sample. That means if after the pre uh, post test kind of a uh, situation. We cannot estimate the exact uh, exact average effect of the treatment of the X. So that should be the preventive, okay? And then attrition is a kind of like a, sometimes when we uh, when we try to uh, try to do the sample and then uh, in the first like a, like a first time like a O1 and O2, Actually, O1 has the 100 and then O2 is the 100 sample. But at the treatment and then when the time goes by, O1 and O2, sample size O1 and O2 is different. 
like O1 is maybe 70 and O2 you know, is 50. These are the kind of what is called the attrition part, which is the some subject is the systematically drop out of the study after the being assigned to the control group or treatment group. That actually uh, like a, uh, distort this kind of effect size. Okay. And then the first one is the experimental effect, which is that there is a, something wrong with the lab environment. And then there is a, some strong possible external factor existed, but we cannot include that one into the model. That's the experimental effect going to be happen. And then also small sample size is also very problematic because small sample size cannot be generalized kind of our results. And then the other one about the external delivery is the non-representative sample. So that means sample should be the randomly assigned to the each control group at the same time. Sample should be drawn from the randomly population, but those sample size does not represent it to the entire characteristic, overall characteristic of the entire population. That is a not representative sample. So that actually distorts the our research. And then also non so, 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 yeah. so sorry, uh, if I get uh, the external validity right, uh, basically it's uh, uh, saying, um, let's say if uh, in, in example, uh, a study is done, but it's done in a particular state in the US, mm -hmm. can the results be generalized to the entire US or some other states, uh, stuff like this, right? Yeah, right. Cause uh, yeah. for example, like, uh, like uh, there is a uh, California and then uh, maybe there is a, uh, state called uh, maybe Tennessee. And then uh, maybe if we study our, our we can set up the research design for the only for the Tennessee state. In that case, this sample does not represent to the cases for the California, right? So, so that's the kind of how representative sample is about. So but, we, but only, I, um, select, so we uh, only select the sample from the maybe Tennessee, which is the rural state. We cannot, this, this kind of a sample characteristic or this kind of a result cannot be applied, cannot be representative or generalized to the samples in the California, which is a highly urban state, right? So that's a non-representative sample itself. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's fair, thanks. Yeah. And then non-representative program or policy. So, that means actually treatment X has the problem, right? Maybe some policy or program is only specific to the only, only sensitive to the some specific context. That means it is not representative. It is not generalizable problem, okay? Because there is a program or policy is only applied to the some very, very specific situation. That is a non representative kind of a condition. So it is not hard to generalize to the, those results, right? Because those program or policy only enacted under the, some certain conditions. Okay. And then final one is the general equilibrium if, uh, effect, which is the, some market or environmental condition cannot be kept consistent. So that means external factor keep changing over time. Because uh, whenever we have a lab and then uh, try to X to Y kind of a uh, data, but our WI is also keep changing the over time. That means it is hard to generalizable about the, this X to Y kind of a relationship because external factor keep changing. It should be the highly controlled or being constant. But the thing is, those are the keep changing over time. That can be the our our sample size characteristic also gonna be the difference different over time. That cannot be uh, possible for the experimental or project experimental uh, situation. Okay. So now we can talk about the uh, talk about the experimental estimate of the effective of the class size reduction. So here is actually kind of a, it's actually providing the sum of the sample, like a, like in here, like a tenancy elementary school over the period for the four years. 
during the 1980s. And then its question is about the how, how class size can be affected to the, their overall performances, like the, their, their school perform, uh, the study performances, right? So we can, we can now set up the, these kind of a possible control and treatment group. So all of the, these control group actually have a regular classes, so no changes. It's a, it's a kind of a, as it is. And or maybe status, uh, status quo kind of condition. So it's a no change, okay? It's a, it's a kind of a baseline, baseline scenario. Okay. So no change. And then treatment one and two, we actually happens a lot of variations. Okay. Like a small classes for the treatment one and treatment two is a regular class plus eight, teacher eight, right? These are the, these are the treatment, right? So this is how design, how samples are, sampling design is about. And then by using the, our data set, we can try to, uh, try to analysis of the dead data. Like, uh, how about the small class and then how about the regular A going to be affected to the, to the score, right? These are the kind of, uh, uh, setting up the equations. So we have uh, actually four different model because we actually have a data for the kindergarten or K1, like pre-K and K2 and K3 data set. It's a kind of a time series data set. And then uh, we have a treatment group and control group throughout the, all of the these kind of a uh, uh, time period, as you can see in the table at the top. And then to testing the this effect, we actually calculating about the these four different model. And then how those how those uh, small class or regular A is gonna be affected to the to the changing uh, to the this reading and map kind of a uh, score. Okay. So when you scroll down here, we can actually see that, like, uh, in case of the in case of the uh, kindergarten kind of thing, small class size is highly related to the performance, the score, average score over over reading and math. And then regular class plus the teacher eighty eight does not have a highly significant like it's a p-value is too high, right? So that's the how we can try to interpret the total result. Okay. It is also the same thing for the K1, uh, K1 and K2 and K, uh, K3. So in case of the K1, interestingly, both class type can be highly related to the increasing to the overall reading and math score. But the thing is to compare to the regular plus eight and small class, small class is a much better re, uh, result in terms of the increasing to the uh, score, right? It's the 29.78 uh, score gonna be much higher than average, but in the regular class plus eight is only 11.95, right? So increase to the overall score is a much effect of the overall score increase is much higher in the small class, not the regular plus A in the, in case of the K1, right? Cool. And then we can also testing about the K2 and K3 and then summarizing the hour result, right? Yeah, like this. So we can actually see the result like this. And then we can also have a constant like an average value. And then 
we also have R square and adjusted R square. R square. It is pretty small, right? That is because of the we actually have a have a very small sample size, relatively small sample size at the same time. This one is in case of the Tennessee school sample, elementary school sample. It is not the representative sample size. So that's the reason why I square is a highly, highly low, so significantly low. Okay. But, but I, I, would, I would think that the sample size is uh, large enough. Why not? Maybe because we didn't consider any controls. I, I was thinking that might be the reason why yeah. R squares are very small. Yeah. And then, and then let me scroll down a little bit. And then we can say in the next chapter, we can actually say about the in here, we only, uh, only cares about the, our X treatment value relationship to the treatment value to Y, right? So we only estimate about the effect of the, that, that different type of the class size on the overall score but the thing is as we can say in the in the in the lab or maybe in the real world kind of environmental there is a lot of external factor right which is the these kind of things like the teacher's experience experience or maybe gender or learn free lunch and their uh, students race right and then students id like the which school they actually uh, attending for the for the classes. Those are the actually possible additional regression like the WI that also related to the effect of the X and then outcome of the Y, right? These should be the included into our model to to more accurately estimate about the effect of the that treatment X, like the different types of the different class size. So let's talk about this section actually learn the learn the dam model, like uh, these kind of uh, four different kind of a setup. So in the first one is uh, we just using the very basic one, which we did for the previous slide, previous sections. And then uh, the other three is uh, we start adding the more additional regression variable like the experience, school ID, or all of the, these things, which is the saturated model. And then we can keep estimating the model like a grade, right? Like this for the for the K123. And then we can get the result like this. And then we can summarize all of the those things. In case of the test score in the kindergarten, we have the three, four different kind of model. So Actually, we have a K one two three, right? If we can do the these things repeatedly throughout the these all of the these kind of a grade, we might have a on sixteen model in total, right? This one is only example of the test score for the kindergarten, but we can also learn the same approaches to the K one, K two, and K three, and then what the differences, okay? When, when the other, other regression is the contr highly controlled. And then, and then now when we try to do these things, our R score going to be hugely increasing when we actually consider as many explore control variable as possible. Our R square going to be going up very significantly compared to the first one, right? Because we all we consider a lot of additional regressors, and then we control the when we control the those external factors, our R square is going to be hugely increased. So that is the more goodness of it. Okay, and then we can do the same thing for the this kind of a standard deviation for the test score, and then we can see the what the variations unit of the variation is about. Depending on the, uh, depending on the these uh, different kind of a class size. So when you say here, what is interesting to see here is small classroom, right here. Throughout the all of the these kind of a, a school grade, 
small class is a kind of a very significantly effect size on the score compared to the, the other the other type of the class size, right? The other of the class size standard deviation of the average effect is a pretty small or it doesn't change at all. But the thing is in case of the small class size, our effect, our magnificence of the effect size for the small class size is a very, very high. So that means Small class size is the kind of a best way to increase increase the uh, performances of the students in terms of the math or science. That's the how, how or that's the generalizable result we can interpret from the our model. Okay, it is very interesting kind of a topic because whenever we have a this kind of a highly randomized and uh, time series data set, we can actually estimate the very good causal effect of the some some our uh, treatment outcome, right? Okay, and then let's talk about the quasi experiments. So, quasi experiment is a as if kind of a randomness is exploited. So that means, what if? This is the kind of a randomly depend, uh, determined what the effect is gonna be. And then uh, also, also we actually assume that uh, our control group and then uh, our random our sample gonna be randomly assigned to the treatment and control group. Okay. And then in this case, to estimate the, this kind of effect size, we actually using the what is called the difference in differences estimator, DID. Because when you're looking at the uh, uh, economics uh, studies or maybe social science studies, you will find a lot of uh, literature using the this kind of a DID estimator. Because this is the most straightforward way we can understand about the causal effect of the treatment on the outcome. So here. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Uh, if I get it right, so we, attend, we uh, apply this quasi-experiment quasi uh, techniques uh, on like observational data when we like have observational data. Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah, sure. Whenever we have a time series data set, like a before and after treatment data set, we can usually do the this kind of a difference in difference test, okay? Yeah, but you know, when we have experimental data, we might not need that. We just use the, the previous technique you just explained. But the thing is, like I said, in at the beginning of the, this chapter, it is in it is the, almost it is almost impossible to get the, those kind of experimental data set. Okay. Yeah, but I think the, the example they give it's a experimental data from the school. Oh, that one yeah. is actually experimental data from the school because yeah. yeah, so that's, that's automatically set up for the for the uh, researchers. Yeah, but, but still, it is not make sure about the. Um, uh, we cannot totally certain that every external factor is considered in the in the that experiment, or that treatment or that sample size actually clearly drawn from the random population. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, I think uh, like uh, this, these guys, uh, this uh, recently, this development economist, they uh, like Esther Duflo and the others, most of their uh, works are using experimental data and, you know, mm -hmm. so it, it's, it, it's, uh, I, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it requires a lot of cost, but I think some, mm -hmm. you have some very good research papers published in good journals where they use like experimental data and stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, if you can set up the, those kind of experimental design, uh, if you think that it is a very good lab settings, and then data are gonna be obtained by using the those highly controlled uh, environment, then might be the very good experimental data set. But the thing is, like I said, in the real world, like uh, the, the, in, the where we live, it is uh, almost uh, impossible to control the, all of the possible external factors 
related to the, those research or experiment. Because uh, my opinion about the previous example is he actually providing the that one as an example for the experimental estimate, but strictly, strictly speaking, maybe there might be also other factors that might be affected by the students or students score. Like for example, if they they attending the some of the after school education program, or maybe if they attending to the private academy after the school to study the math and science sciences or reading, that is actually quite quite a case in the South Korea, but. Maybe if you can go to the private academy after the school, those things, those factors actually affected to the overall score. But that factor does that external factor was not include uh, did not included was not included in the model. So in that case, is it okay to say that the previous example is the highly experimental kind of a research design that's not the case i personally think that maybe only experimental cases we can get this is my personal opinion is like uh, when we have a kind of a natural kind of a lab setting like uh, when we go to the some of the bio uh, biology kind of a uh, lab experiment within the research lab and then there is a or there is a research incubator inside the inside the lab and then there is a lab there is a mouse mice in there and then we can try to put some there is a lot of a lot of a sample for the here is the this one is the case one and this one is the case group one and two and then this one is the actually a lot of labs and labs that's two and that's one and uh, only for the this last one we actually us uh, uh kind of can cancer and then uh, when we after the time goes by what's the survival rates of the less these kind of a lab environment can be i would say about the very experimental kind of a situation and then we can get the very highly experimental data it is highly randomized and then randomly assigned to the, this group. And then uh, this treatment can be exact accurately treatment uh, measured. But in the economist and then the social sciences kind of a situation, we cannot set up the, this kind of a lab environment in the real world. Yeah, so, sorry, I, I didn't get, I didn't, uh, I get your point, but uh, you know, uh, Sort of economists will rely a lot on this satirist by which holding pulled in all other, uh, yeah. other, other, yeah. So I think so, if you want to go to, to the extremes, then then you will not trust any of the, the research uh, findings of economists because it, it's almost impossible to control for all the covariates. So that's the reason why most of yeah. the economic studies actually using the DID estimator because they already know that we cannot set up the experimental conditions in the real world. So they actually setting up the dare say about the our research setting is a quasi experimental kind of a characteristic. So we can actually conduct in the DID model, not the not the one in the previous section. Yeah, I I, I mean I, I think this is somehow a good subjective, but I, I think most of the time it's very costly to run experiments. So that, that could be one of the main uh, drawbacks. So, you know, then the best option you have is just use observational data and, and use some of these techniques. Yeah, but the ID. once you get the, those kind of data, that is not the experimental data anymore, okay, in the real world situation. Okay. Yeah, but well, I think let's let, maybe we continue because uh, it's somehow sub subjective, you know. Yeah, it's a kind of a subjective matter, but yeah, yeah. but the thing is, that's the reason why most of the economic, uh, urban economic literature and then a social science literature, they usually assume to the their setting 
research setting is the quasi-experimental, and then they're actually using the, this kind of a difference in difference test, like a, like a, like a calculating the difference between a before and after the treatment. Okay, like this. Because uh, we cannot tell 100% make sure about the, our setting is the experimental or not. And then uh, as far as uh, my experience in the economics or social science settings, experimental data is uh, very, very hard to obtain in those kind of uh, fields. Natural sciences is a different, different, okay? Like a biology or maybe chemistry or maybe mechanical engineering or electric electronic engineering, engineering science or natural sciences. They can set up the all of the those kind of a lab environment controlled by the researchers. But in case of the economics and then the social sciences, we actually those kind of outcome is highly variable, vary depending on the external factor of the built environment or some of the people or people in living in the country. So, so it is hard to predict. So that means we all should actually setting up the quota experiment. So that's my opinion. Anyway, so let's continue. And then, and then by using the, this kind of a DID factor, it's the same thing. The only thing is we just only using the dead differences for the indicator for the outcome. So here is the mean treatment, which is the mean control and mean treatment effect, like the same parallel, right? But the thing is that whenever we have uh, another treatment, our slope is going to be the changes, like a better one. So in this chain is what is called the difference in difference. So, so that means in the quasi-experimental design, okay, we only assume that uh, we just saying that uh, it is not the randomly assigned or randomly drawn from the population for the, our sample size, but we just uh, pretend to assume those kind of things is met in the quasi-experimental. But the thing is, rather in that case, we cannot. It is not possible to use in the in the in the regression model in the previous sample that actually overestimate the kind of a coefficients. So we actually try to use the difference in difference test. Just kind of a checking the dead differences, not the exactly cause effect. Sometimes we can actually assume to the in the quasi experimental condition. We also thinking about the what is the exactly trim, average treatment effect gonna be by through the more iteration of the model. So that's a kind of a possible, but usually in the natural in the quasi experimental, we actually Strictly speaking, we actually pretend to the assume that we actually have a randomized sample. And then that's the reason why whenever we have uh, these kind of situations, this, uh, this W is also very important to the quasi-experimental model. At the same time, in the quasi-experimental model, it is also very important to the testing the validity of the data. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, is it now like you're explaining the regression discontinuity? Uh, that is actually kind of a control variable, okay? Yeah, they are like a regression estimator, okay? Uh, no, I mean, uh, um, you, you know, uh, you were explaining the, 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 the difference in difference. Uh -huh. Uh, is it okay. still the, the difference in difference because it it, it all, the, the next section i think it's like the regression discontinuity or it's still is it still, yeah, difference it's still in here difference? yeah because uh when yeah. actually in here x and y is the our kind of a, kind of a goal how this treatment is effect to the outcome this is the our this is the, what the chapter 13 is about is that correct sure but Either, uh, but both the experimental and quota experimental also has the WI factor. Cause uh, there's also a lot of external factors that affects to the X and Y, and then uh, changing the those relationships. So we also have the same approaches for the, including the, this kind of a discontinuity estimator, like a experimental situation, 
like uh, experimental situations. We also need to consider this WI. Okay. So yeah, then, but, they understand. So, so like uh, if I get it right, uh -huh. um, uh, maybe I am wrong, but if I get it right, uh -huh. normally, uh, uh, if you look at the, the book uh, even, this uh, the, the part where you, the WI is, is under the next section, which is the regression discontinuity. So in the difference and difference, we are assuming that, uh, uh, that, you know, the, by uh, doing this difference and difference, difference between, uh, within treatment and also within control and uh, subtracting these two differences, uh, the results we get from this is, uh, it's on bias, regardless of, so we don't need to include additional Ws. And if you look at it, basically this is the approach he, yeah, he uses. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so of uh, sort of this this difference in differences, assuming that, regardless of we don't need to control for any, we don't need to have, add any any Ws in our regression. No, 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 no. That's not that's not true. Yeah, but go, that, that basically this is the argument of the book. If I get it right, just go up because this X section you are looking at, it's 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 he's explaining another technique, which is the regression discontinuity. Oh, okay. That's why he brings so, in the W. You see. So, okay, so in here, okay, when you can see in the in the chapter in here, like a chapter thirteen point four, yeah, regression discontinuity estimate is under the thirteen point four, right? That means in the quasi experimental, these are the actually under the sub components of the this thing. Actually, experiment and quasi experiment mechanism. Fundamental mechanism is the same, no difference. Okay. Whenever we have a, con we need to include a control variable like a discontinuity estimator. We have to include in in our experimental conditions. Okay. Yeah. Dif difference in difference is kind of like a, we just only quasi experimental conditions. Difference in difference is the more like a feasible way to testing the treatment effect. And then yeah. to testing, to we also need to control the variable. There is also a lot of ex external factors that affect it to the this trim effect of the treatment of X on Y. To do that, we have to include this WI. So, in this case, the beta one and y one and x one is all of the all of the this thing is the difference in difference kind of kind of outcome. Okay. Yeah. It is not the different. It is not the different. Okay. Quasi experimental design and quasi experimental design fundamentally is the same. We actually have a O one and O two, and then one is the apply treatment is applied. And then when after the treatment, we actually compare to the e effect of the treatment based on the this comparison of the past po uh, post test, right? Fundamentally the same, but in case of the quasi experimental design, there is a, a lot of uh, unknown external factors we cannot control. But even so, experimental design setting is the same. Whenever we need to control the this continually estimator we can get, we have to definitely include in the dead one to the for the quasi experimental design. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is not different. Okay. It is not not the separate method. Okay. Difference in difference is the just kind of showing us about the effect of the treatment on the outcome. It is also the same. Uh, same for the. Uh, same for the experimental design about the X to the Y and then analysis of the these things like uh, this star K. That is actually treatment, right? And then uh, whenever we have a random sample, or uh, whenever we have we need to include the control variable, we also need to discontinuous estimate should be included. Yeah. That's how this one is about. So actually, I know I understand that you are. It is a very confusing concept, okay. But the thing is, experimental and quasi experimental. I I really wanted to emphasize is fundamental mechanism of the these two these two approaches are the same. We have O one and O two, 
and then treatment is applied. And then after the treatment, what's the change between the O1 and O2? Very, very simple. But what is the main difference about the, these two is in the first, in the, in the 13.3, in this one is a highly controlled environment. So that means we actually know everything about the, our, our setting. We can, we have all of the regression continuous estimate being controlled by the researchers to estimate the treatment effect. But in the quasi experimental kind of things, we know the difference in difference and the y, y outcome, difference to the y outcome. But the thing is in the quasi experimental design, we actually assume that the, our sample gonna be randomly selected and then randomly assigned to the control and treatment group. Even if our environmental we did not con we did not fully control the our our environmental, and then we did not con fully control the our external regression discontinuity estimator. Even if we cannot do that, but we just assume that we can try to include as many discontinuity estimator as possible, and then we just keep try to the control the environment and then to make the, our analysis to the close to the experimental kind of a design. But the thing is, it is not the fully controlled the experimental you know, environment. So that's the reason why we actually thinking about the using the difference in different estimator. So kind of a, uh, checking the relative differences between the control and uh, treatment group in terms of the treat uh in terms of, in terms of the application of the treat of the treatment x so it is a very confusing and hard concept i also take a lot of time to understand this kind of situation because <laughs> i actually for num chapter 13 actually has a book kind of a Chapter 13 by itself actually kind of a one semester kind of a courses, like a quasi and experimental design, research design is the one semester worth course. It is a very, very complicated. And you know, I also have a very thick book that only explains about the quasi experimental and experimental design. So it is a very, very confusing and you know, very, very difficult kind of a concept because it is very hard to understand. Yeah, I understand those things. But fundamentally, what I understand about the, my experience is the mechanism is the same, but the, the experimental setting, the way we can understanding the, that research design is a, a little bit different. Do you understand what I mean? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I, I think I was mixing up things. Yeah, thanks for the yeah, clarification. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, like this. So in here, we cannot exactly kind of a uh, kind of a, a measuring about the what the main differences between main effect of the each each level, but at least we can actually tell the relative differences between the treatment and control group. The reason why we only measuring the this one is because of the, there is a lot of unknown factors. We cannot measure. That's the assumption of the quasi experimental. So that's the reason why we only testing about the difference in different steps in this case. This relative distance can be the more feasible in these settings. Okay. So this one is how this kind of a setup like this. Like uh, like uh, in here, in this case, actually the slope, like the treatment effect, is the same. But sometimes, when we try to do the after the treatment, maybe slope by itself gonna be the changing a lot, like this. That is also kind of a, a totally different kind of a quasi experimental design. The reason why this can be happen is because because the treatment effect is the vary depending on the this time period. 
is because of the uh because of the it is not the natural totally perfectly controlled the experimental kind of a design yeah okay so i think that's it because these are all of the bottom line is the kind of example just kind of measuring the treatment effect like this okay like a like a this kind of thing so actually this is uh, especially for the this kind of a kind of a pattern like a like this after after the after the treatment treatment period this one is actually sometimes we also call this one is an interrupted uh, time uh, time series analysis. In that cases, we actually using the kind of a kind of a what is called the interaction kind of a products like a D multiplied by X. X is the treatment like a zero and one, and then a D is a kind of like a maybe year or maybe outcome kind of things. So by by calculating the these kind of interaction products, we can actually calculating the these kind of effect, like after the treatment. Okay, that is also mentioned maybe at the top of the these sections. Uh, Um, yeah, I think, yeah, here, I think the DC exercise is going to be, uh, not this one. Yeah, I think I cannot find where it is, but yeah, it's a literally the, quite the same for the, those things. Like, uh, uh, yeah, here, yeah. We can actually multiply by the period by, by the these differences, like a treatment dummy, and then we can calculate about the, these kind of a uh, treatment at before and after treatment kind of a graphs. This is actually what is called. A, we can also sometimes call about the interrupted time series analysis. Okay. That's 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 interesting. Yeah. So you just feel free to uh you just feel free to checking out the what is the interrupted time series is about. Because maybe here, maybe I think yeah. I, so, yeah. but what one 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 question because I um uh, one thing I know is all these techniques uh should have uh some assumptions uh, on which they rely on, but I didn't see where the, 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 the author didn't mention that. I don't know. Yeah. Because for the for the for the, uh, the, the right. difference in difference, the, one of the assumptions is like the parallelization assumption mm -hmm. that you know uh, 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 absence of the treatment, body control and the and the treat uh, the, the the treatment will will sort of mm -hmm. their outcomes will be yeah. hypothetically almost similar, so something like this. Yeah. Parallelization can assumption. See, can you see this this height? Right. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Mm. Yeah, here. These are the kind of a possible pattern you can thinking about about the time series analysis and the quasi experimental or experimental design. So this A or A is a kind of a typical example that what we saw in the in the in the our book and then there is also kind of a slope changes over time right like this and this and this so there is a lot of a kind of a level actually a is the level change and then the b is the slope change and then the C is the level, both the level and slope changes. And then the D is the, some of the lag defect. So that means three months actually starts here. 
but the thing is actual treatment effect starts uh, uh, magnitude of the start uh, treatment effect starts here. It is actually here. This is actually lagged time. Okay. So these are the all possible kind of things. Whenever you you have uh, this kind of a time series data set and then uh, setting up the experimental or quasi experimental design, and then uh, you can have a X and time timeline is a T. And then you also have a WI as a discontinuity estimator. You can get the all of the this possible type of the uh for the experimental result, depending on the this treatment uh enacted period or not. Okay. So so this yeah. is the yeah, this is the kind of a brief introduction. Cause uh, yeah, maybe you could share the link in the chat. This looks interesting, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. this one, this chapter is a uh, author actually very, very briefly summarized about the experimental and quasi experimental design. But the thing is, this chapter does not fully explain about the total concept of the both things. Yeah. And then I strongly recommend you to, if you are really interested in to, about the experimental and quasi experimental design, I want you to. Uh, find out the more material or more literature review about the, this one. Because uh, when you go to the Amazon.com, maybe uh, yeah, there is a lot of books about the, these things. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it's particularly this one is uh this this book is the uh, one of the Bible for the experimental and quasi experimental design by for the research written by Campbell. This book is a uh, very very explained very well about the concept of the deep thing. I actually read the this book and then uh, my idea is to come from the this one or this one this one is the second edition and then also there is also kind of a, another statistic technique called the propensity score matching analysis this one is also a very interesting technique we can use to the quasi experimental design setting but the thing is in here authors only explains about the uh some of the regression model yeah. uh, the regression based approaches to the experimental and quasi experimental setting so, so this one so is basically like OLS technique where we just yeah or we can based on yeah. the OLS based experimental and quasi experimental design yeah it is a more like a interrupted time series analysis. But if you want to if you are very interesting into the uh no uh, understanding about the experimental and quasi experimental design, I strongly recommend you to check out the this book. Yeah, maybe maybe you could share the link in the chat, then I'll give it a look. Yeah, maybe I think the whole one. Yeah, maybe you can just kind of Google it or maybe here. Yeah, this. Yeah. This be, yeah, you yeah, thanks. I'll, I'll 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 give give it a look. I'll give it a look. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is it. And then thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it is a quite quite good discussion and then I, I know that